Hello and welcome to part two of the Coconut Collaborative edition of Challenge Rachel. This time it's the apple pie spaghetti. cotta video that I did I kind of brainstormed the idea of making a baked apple pie spaghetti <laughs> out of apple puree that I'm going to bake with some spices and then I'm going to alginate that using the sodium alginate and calcium lactate again and hopefully this time it's going to work <laughs> but we'll see that's how we find out we experiment yes and then to serve on top of the spaghetti a bit like meatballs I suppose <laughs> great big ball of ice cream that's what I'm planning so I'm going to use some of their chocolate little pots and praline and chocolate and then mix that with some of their vanilla yogurt so hopefully that will just be a nice straightforward one the oven's preheating at 160 you can go much higher than that as long as you keep an eye on it but I'm going to make a little tart I'm going to do a pineapple and grapefruit soft drink inspired tart so make sure you check in for that one as well prep for this is nice and simple because I want the pectin that's in the apple core Chuck the ball into a roasting pan. I've used Braeburn apples, which are like an eating apple, so they've got enough natural sugars in there that I don't need to add anymore. But do feel free to use whatever kind of apples you've got. If you've only got the Bramley, the big sour ones, that's fine. But just add a bit of extra sugar in. I'm keeping the sweetness of the apples to a minimum because I'm going to put the ice cream on there, which is very sweet. And then I think I'm also going to do some maple and pecan granola, just have a bit of crunchy kind of topping. So it's kind of apple pie, apple crumble hybrid type thing. I'll now add some spicing into here. I really have got the whole apple there, so you can see the core, I've got the stem. It's all fine because it's going to be blended anyway. I'm going to sprinkle on a bit of allspice. You might have also heard this referred to as pimenta. It's a berry, but it does taste like a variety of different spices. So it's kind of clove type flavors, very nice warm sort of spice. Maybe a sixteenth of a teaspoon, even less than that. So just one big pinch is fine. And then I've got some cinnamon. Put in three cloves, grate some nutmeg. Again, not much, just a little pinch. Nutmeg especially is quite a potent, intense, spicy, you really only need a little. But isn't that beautiful inside? I'm also going to add some licorice root, that's what they look like. And I found a really good way of doing it is just to use a ski peeler. I'll add a little splash of juice, maybe, I don't know, a shot glass full, <laughs> you know, not much, just to help soften them down. Stir everything and you can do this on top of the stove. I just find it a bit easier in the oven because you don't have to worry about the bottom catching. Very similar process to how I make the fruit butters, um, but I just won't be reducing it. It's just going to be the puree. And it's, so once it's baked and blended, then it's ready to go. Lid on, and then I'll put this in the oven for about uh, 20 minutes, something like that, half an hour. And just keep checking every so often to see how they're softening. The apples have been in for about probably 45 minutes, something like that. The pastry for the tart is taking a little bit longer than I anticipated. <laughs> so I'm just gonna push those to the side. Check the apples. These are beautifully soft. Pretty perfect. I'm gonna take these out of the oven now, let them cool down a little bit. I'll finish off the pastry for my other video and then I'll come back and blend these. Cause this needs to be cold before I start putting the gelling agent in. So I'll see you back in a little bit. I'm gonna blend the baked apples now. So get everything in to the blender. I think I'm going to add a little bit more juice. It just might be too thick to blend smooth. So again, just a little splash, like a shot glass, 25 mil or so. Ah! Okay, so it's probably like 75 mils. And then scrape it all out and then sieve it. Using quite a fine sieve, and this will take out all of the bits of pip and stem and the spices as well, so the cloves and the licorice. I'm going to check the flavour of it now, just to see if I want anything else in there. Mm. That's perfect. It's slight tart, <laughs> very juicy. 
there's a slight tartness there, which is perfect. That's exactly how I wanted it. So I think that's going to counteract the sweet toppings that I'm going to put in. So I'm going to weigh this in a bowl because the molecular gastronomy needs more precision. What I'm going to do is mix the alginate into some apple juice because I think that's going to help prevent clumps. And I'm going to do a ratio of kind of three to 100. Last time when I did the grapefruit, I did one. So I've got 100 grams of juice, 520 grams of puree, and 22 grams of the alginate. I'm going to whisk the powder into the juice. Oh yeah, I definitely should use the hand blender. It's not quite what I expected, but we'll work with it, we'll roll with it. And then put that into here. We get the stick blender in. <laughs> well, it's definitely gloopy. So here's, here's the goo. It's very thick. Mm. So I'm going to put this in the fridge until I need it. I planned on using this, a syringe like I did the proof of concept, but that might be thick enough to go through a piping bag. So I might do that onto the granola. And look, we've got a visitor for once. Hello, Cleo. <laughs> she spends most of her time sleeping, so it's very rare to have her in the kitchen. I've already got a load of granola in the cupboard, so I'm just going to make a small batch because I don't need so much. <laughs> and it's not a, it's a strawberry flavoured one, so I don't really want that on the apples. Um, and I've never made a batch this small before, so I'm going to try and kind of cobble it together and wing it a little bit. So I'm going to do a cup of oats. I'm using Flavahund Jumbo Oats. 80 grams of oats. Oven's preheating at 160. A teaspoon of just sunflower oil. I'm gonna do a couple of teaspoons of maple syrup. And stir that and see, see what the consistency's like. A little sprinkle of salt. Not much, but just to enhance the flavor a touch. 10, 15 pecans. Depends how many pecans you like, I suppose. Just break them down a little bit. This mix. maple syrup so maybe another teaspoon and do feel free to put anything you like in here it doesn't need to be maple pecan all you need is some sort of liquid sugar a bit of oil and you can put all kinds of stuff in there put in a tablespoon of maybe well maybe two thirds of a tablespoon of sunflower seeds and scoop this out onto a baking tray and get it kind of flat in there nice and even so it toasts up evenly. Put this in the oven for 15 minutes, pull it out and stir it. See you in a bit. It's already going a little bit crunchy and crisp, you can hear it. I haven't done it yet, but I'm thinking this mixture would work well for a flapjack. So probably put a bit more maple syrup in and a bit more oil, enough so it compacts and holds its shape. And then, uh, and then just pack it really tightly into a tray. That will probably be delicious back into the oven for another 15 minutes. The granola needs to be a really lovely golden brown, so the timings aren't too exact here. It's just gonna be entirely dependent on your oven, that sort of thing. But just do it 15 minute intervals. Just keep bringing it out, stirring it, put it back in until you're happy with it. So this has probably had about 40 minutes in total, but it's all golden brown. If you like it a bit darker, feel free to take it down further. I'll put this to the side to cool down and then I'll get on with making the ice cream. Onto the ice cream slash frozen yogurt slash frozen dessert. <laughs> so I'm going to use some of the vanilla coconut yogurt. I'm using half a pot. And then these pots are 45 grams each. And I'm going to use seven of them. The reason it's not eight is because I ate one. <laughs> these are the praline and chocolate. You can see they've got a really lovely kind of almost fudge-like texture. I made some kind of uh, I don't know how to describe them, oven balls with sweet potato, oats and apricots and I just bunged them in the freezer and then air fried them to reheat them and then smeared it with these. Oh my goodness, it was delicious. The texture on this is just very thick and rich and delicious. And then smush everything together. Turn this in the ice cream maker and then it'll go in the freezer just to finish up. 
but I've noticed frozen yogurt and kind of vegan ice cream has a tendency to set rock hard. So I'm gonna try putting in a bit of rum and hopefully the alcohol will stop it achieving the block of uh, product <laughs> that I don't want. I'll put in 25 mils, so it's like a shot of rum. If I had Frangelico, it's like a hazelnut liqueur, I'd use that, but I don't. And I'm sad about that because it's perfect, but not to worry. <laughs> so I'll splash a little bit in and then mix it through. And then pour the rest in. Check the flavour. Mm -hmm. When I come to edit this, I'll do a bit of research and see if I can find ways that don't involve alcohol. This is off the top of my head what I could come up with. So I'm going to put this back in the fridge and let it cool down again because the way the ice cream maker works, it's a frozen bowl basically, like a water filled bowl that you put in the freezer and then it churns it. So you want everything to be as cold as possible. It's just a cheap thing that I've had 20 odd years and <laughs> gets used once a year. Uh, yeah, so I'll see you back. So I'll churn at the same time as making the spaghetti, hopefully. Um, <laughs> oh dear, this has gone very thick. <laughs> My chief concern was that it wasn't going to set. <laughs> And that clearly isn't a concern I needed to have had, is it? I'll try forcing some through a piping bag and see what happens. I just don't know if this is the most it can set, so whether there's any point in trying to do the calcium bath. I don't know. So I've done a scoop. That worked. So let's do it. Let's just go for it, I guess. This is 2,344 grams of water. So I think what I'm going to do is like a 2% solution. So I'll do, yeah, 50 grams of calcium. So I'm going to drop this in, and this is just cold water. And we'll settle for a few seconds. But all of that needs to be clear, no particles in it. When it's gotten clear, you can, you'll be able to see the still residue at the bottom. Let's give it another mix. We'll probably have to do that four or five times. While the solution carries on dissolving, I'm just gonna set up the ice cream maker. So the unit I have is just like a plastic pot. And this insert goes in it. That's plastic, that's metal. And in the middle, inside it is water. So you keep that in the freezer. Churning attachment. This is like a, a motor. I'm gonna drop in the chocolate yumminess. You want to work reasonably quickly. <laughs> Ideally not get it all over like I just did. You poke the spindle through the lid, click it into place. And then fit that on. And then switch it on. In the meantime, I'm going to stuff the piping bag. Sure, that's supposed to clip in better, but. <sighs> I watched MacGyver as a child. Okay. So, let's get the goo into here. I've got another large bowl of water, just plain water, and that's going to be like a rinse. You can see the water is completely clear. There's no particles or anything in it. And what I'm going to do, I hope this works, is to do the spaghetti into the sieve because then it's just easier to lift out and put in the water bath. That's the plan anyway. We'll see. All right, let's do it. <laughs> so much potential for disaster. No way. Mm. Well, that's a problem. <laughs> I can't believe that's just happened. Right, I'm going to have to try and syringe it. So I'm just trying to force, force it into the syringe. Mm. 
once again the syringe is courtesy of my uh, coffee supporters. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> you literally are a lifesaver right now. Fingers and toes crossed for me, please. <laughs> Gonna check on the ones that have been in the bath. It worked! Yes! Get in! <laughs> oh yes! Mega! Right. <laughs> Drop those into the bath. <gasps> Okay, <laughs> just going to try it with a thinner needle. This might be caught in disaster. Let's see, it might be just be too thick. It works, but it's going to hurt my hands. So I'm going to be judicious. <laughs> Go back to the fatty. Setting up a towel, and I'm going to drop the noodles onto that once they've had their little cold bath. I'm so stoked that this has worked. <laughs> Look at that! <gasps> oh my god! If you don't have a syringe or a piping bag, you could probably use like a plastic bag, a carrier bag, uh, but it needs to be quite a thick one. So maybe like your bag for life, the type that you get, not the expensive fabric ones, but the, the kind of thick plastic ones and then pack it all into one corner and snip a tiny bit off and that will work quite well. A Ziploc bag might work but because of how thick it is you might struggle and it will rip quite easily I think. Oh, ice cream. Mm -hmm. Oh! <laughs> is incredible. This is the most ridiculous thing I've ever made and I love it. I'm going to transfer the noodles, the dry, kind of dried ones into a bowl. I'll have a clean down, sort myself out, <laughs> get some painkillers for my hands because they're really bad. Um, and I'll see you for the eating. Yay! And I'll also scrape the ice cream into a tub and bang it in the freezer for a little bit just so it carries on setting appearance wise and maybe texture wise as well. It definitely would have been better to do the thinner ones but I'm glad I didn't force it because my hands are already really sore. Um, but yeah, so if I can get a heavy duty piping bag I think that will work perfectly. Lots of little thin luxuriant scrums. I've plated up my spaghetti and granola. And I think it might be quite cute to do little balls of ice cream, a bit like meatballs. Just, you know, if you're going to be goofy, go whole hog. So I'm going to, I've got this ladle. This might not work at all, but I'm going to try it. I'm just going to dip it in hot, boiling hot water for a few seconds. Try and put the ladle into the ice cream and use... In. <laughs> it's spaghetti time. All right. <laughs> mm. <laughs> this is just ridiculous, but I love it. My brain was anticipating hot, even though I know it's ice cream and cold apple puree. My brain still was like, oh, something hot. And then was a bit shocked when it was cool. That's really tasty. The textures are really nice. So you've got crunch from the granola that kind of goes over the top of the lovely silky softness from the apple noodles. And then the lovely creaminess from the ice cream. And that ice cream did work really well. And it's the perfect texture. It's not solid, but it's not soft either. It's not too soft. I'm so happy with how this came out. <laughs> I, like, I had the idea and I was like, oh, that'd be great if it works. And I just didn't anticipate it would work this well. My goodness, wow. <laughs> if I make it again, I think it would benefit from more apple flavor. Even just that small amount of sodium alginate has kind of muted the apple-ness. So what would be good is to put in a couple of tablespoons of apple butter 
uh, I'll stick the, a, an info card there to the, a link for that. And it's basically just apple puree that you bake for a couple of hours, well, an hour, hour and a half maybe. And that really intensifies the flavor. So I think that in the apple puree would just really ramp it up a notch. But even just like that is incredible. It's also given me lots and lots of ideas because I could make noodles or pasta from this and using vegetables. So maybe carrots or red cabbage even. That would be really dramatic and striking. And perhaps using beans and then making like a high protein type of noodle. Mm. I've seen them in the supermarket and they look to have this kind of texture, but they've got fish in them, so I can't, I can't eat them. But there's definitely so many applications for this. So it turns out that my crazy little idea has had a fantastic wider ripple. Mmm. I've got a couple of pieces here. I'm going to stick it in the microwave because I just think it'd be interesting to see what it's like when it's hot. So that's had about 20 seconds. It hasn't straight up exploded, which I'd kind of feared it might. That's the, yeah, so the integrity is fine. Stick that in. Mm. Yeah, that's really good. And that would work really well for that dish because it would melt the ice cream. So you'd get like a lovely saucy, soupy loveliness at the bottom of the dish to then smother around all the strands. For more marvellous molecular gastronomy, hit subscribe, tap the bell icon, and let's see what else I can spaghetti.